Welcome back to Advanced Sci-Fi Civilizations Too Stupid To Really Exist and thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this episode. Today we'll be digging into another human dystopia. It's Bregna from Eon Flux. Charlize Theron covers up for a movie adaptation of the bizarre cyberpunk MTV show and that isn't the only discrepancy going on around here. Lifting a bunch of token elements from the original while leaving it to a video game to try and awkwardly mash the two canons together. But that's not our style here at Media Zealot. So as usual we'll focus exclusively on the content that doesn't confuse the shit out of me. It's the movie version of Bregna on its surface a seemingly idyllic place. The last bastion of humanity saved from a lethal pandemic by their benevolent dictator, a so-called industrial disease pushing them to the verge of extinction. The remaining 5 million now concentrated in one surviving city, protected from the scary plants and animals that have retaken the earth. But with the population suffering from a vague affliction and with many people disappearing, all is not as it seems. I cloned everybody. After a series of revelations, we discover that Trevor Goodchild's vaccine also caused sterility among the survivors. And with no other options, he's been cloning the population over and over again for 400 years. Yeah, like Umbrella, everyone around here is a damn clone. This and the bland concrete architecture contrasted with a weird fashion sense, I'm beginning to get Panem vibes. The red flags are everywhere. But firstly, can someone please explain to me how they managed to deceive anyone with this cloning conspiracy. Some citizens are already beginning to recognize people from their previous lives and others would surely notice they look nothing like their offspring, not to mention their leaders would appear to be immortal. But with Bregna essentially a massive laboratory we can somewhat understand the secrecy and forgive the rulers of Bregna for having a mild authoritarian bent. In this case confining the population seems like a pretty necessary evil. But with a technocracy of scientists at the helm this city must otherwise be the the pinnacle of logic and rationalism, right? Uh. Point 1 Chairman Trevor Goodchild, Bregner's MIA dictator. Contrary to typical dystopian leadership, Trevor Goodchild is, or at least was, a pretty smart hombre. A committed scientist who literally saved the human species, ruling over Bregna as a means of maintaining control over the population while he desperately searches for a cure. Even his clones seem committed to the cause. So I don't think anyone would begrudge the guy for doing what needed to be done. But although his past exploits may be impressive, unfortunately for Bregna, nowadays Trevor 7.0's cognitive of prowess seems to be on the wane. First off, there's Bregner's current setup, possessing advanced surreal technology with a state surveillance apparatus that is bordering on being omnipresent. Yet when it comes to ensuring the security of the ruling elites, this tech is suddenly non-existent. They're smart enough to have a no man's land to make any incoming targets easily identifiable. But then they've got no defensive weaponry with any real stopping power. Just weaponized cacao pods that inject a mere pain inducing substance and cutty grass that is more an annoyance than anything. Easily avoidable thanks to these convenient platforms of harmless brickwork dotted around. For our well prepared assassins this is literally a walk in the park. Obviously this isn't the first time these ladies have played the floor as lava. So Eon infiltrates the central government buildings and gets lost immediately, casually wandering around for a while with little challenge other than the occasional dipshit guard. With all their technology they seemingly didn't see Eon coming at all. No weapon activation alerts, no sensors and no monitored surveillance. Sensors. We did see a previous mission in which Eon disrupted their surveillance capabilities but this can't offer any excuse for their current lack of oversight because that mission seemed to occur over 9 months ago as shown by Una needing that time to gestate before being reborn. And even their surveillance facilities didn't appear to have adequate monitoring, this tech was already patchy as hell. The sensors are only partially functional. Oran may have had cause to sabotage their security systems, but I can't come up with any excuse for Trevor and the others' lack of oversight. Their surveillance did appear to be operational at the time, and it was working just fine in Trevor's bedroom. Is it? 
It's only pure dumb luck that nobody was killed. A woeful lack of security for such a technologically advanced yet vulnerable society, with the general population completely ignorant of the cloning program. Should the leadership fall, it would mean humanity's extinction. But hey, Trevor is firstly a scientist, right? It's not entirely surprising that him and his brethren would neglect matters of security despite the fairly massive stakes. One monarchan eluding all of our defenses. The problem will be taken care of. The problem is Trevor's concept of security. Surely his preeminent focus would be on running this colony of test subjects and the science of solving their conundrum. Well, not really. The guy's in a disastrous power struggle with his brother and he doesn't even realize it. We're living the solution already. This is perfection. Why can't you just embrace it? I think you're forgetting that this was all meant to be temporary. Relying on secondhand information from Auron in an arena he should have full control over. And what about the test results? All negative. And failing to notice that his entire test group has been killed in police action. Killed in police action. Along with many others. Other women have been getting pregnant naturally. Outside of your experiments. And you killed them too? I had to stop it. So guys, don't be like Trevor, stay on top of your game with Skillshare. It's an online learning community for creatives offering thousands of inspiring classes on topics including illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing and more. I've been upskilling with advanced video editing in Premiere Pro by Jordi Vanderput. The videos are easy to follow and I've learned some solid methods that will definitely improve my editing and project management. Skillshare has classes suited to every learner learning style and skill level. And as a dedicated development platform, Skillshare won't distract you with any ads. With new premium classes launching all the time, you'll never run out of opportunities to explore your creativity or discover new passions. So here's the deal. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So you can start exploring your creativity today. So Trevor has failed to maintain any semblance of supervision over the population, security matters, his scientific pursuits, or even the political situation. It leaves me wondering what the hell he does with his time because he doesn't seem to be paying attention to anything. And I'm not sure if we can blame some clone-induced brain disorder for his vacantness. Because the original Trevor also showed an over-reliance on his psychotic brother. There was nothing that they could do. He couldn't even muster up the energy to double check if his wife's DNA was salvageable. I ordered her DNA destroyed. He's a scientist who doesn't seem to believe in replicating results, even when it involves saving people he loves or the entire human race. Sort it out, Trevor. Useless. Although he may obviously have his shortcomings, at least Trevor is full of good intentions, which is something that definitely can't be said of his nefarious brother. Point two, Oren risked the entire human species for the sake of his own selfish agenda. He's the bad child of the good child brothers. The exact kind of muddle-brained power-mad villain we all love to hate. It's Bregner's top moron, Oren. He's a living allegory for mankind's futile quest to subjugate nature. Nature's the one who's obsolete, not us. But on the surface, he's driven by his desire to maintain the status quo and therefore his power, as well as achieve some semblance of immortality through his clones. He wants to live forever. Ambitions now threatened by fertility reasserting itself in the population. Nature's finally found a way. Boy, I hate being right all the time. But instead of doing something a bit more low-key, like sterilizing people or aborting natural pregnancies, he's been killing off all the fertile citizens on a massive scale, single-handedly alienating the population and emboldening the Monarchan Rebellion. And now he wants to make an even bigger mess by overthrowing his brother. Secretly, I reckon Oren is just sick to death of living in Trevor's shadow. I've gone beyond you. Now I need to be free. So for the sake of his own vanity and power, Oren has not only destabilized the entire societal order, he's risking the very survival of the human species. He's utterly dedicated to keeping humanity in an extremely precarious state, reliant on a slowly degrading source of DNA with a small constrained population when it's all no longer necessary. Even if the world was irrevocably changed with the reintroduction of natural births, Oren could have easily left himself with enough resources to keep cloning himself forever 
if he really wanted to. This entire campaign is massive overkill, eventually getting what he deserves when he idiotically gets all close and personal with Trevor and the Monarchan's most skillful assassin. He did bring a few guards along, but these guys are typical henchmen bowling pins. Then when he finally gets the drop on Trevor, he hesitates. So now we've seen the shonky thinking of both of Bregner's sibling rulers. But surely for a regime so invested in the cloning program, they must have put some thought into protecting their genetic legacy. Point 3. The Relical, the Kryptonian Monkey Skull of Bregna. Yep, at the risk of pissing off the Kryptonians and possibly sparking off a rave once again. Remember the Kryptonian monkey skull? That thing the Kryptonians use as a sole repository of their species' entire genetic code, the destruction of which would likely cause their extinction? Well, the relical is pretty much the same thing, except Bregner did it first, and their version is a blimp flying around out in the open, just asking for someone to mess with it. And this in a city on the verge of civil war. The Monarchans may not be aware of the Relical's true nature, but even accepting it on face value as a mere monument to Bregna, it presents a rather tempting political target. And the Monarchans possess advanced technology and weaponry more than enough to pull it off. Let's also not discount the inherent risk of accident or malfunction. Bregna's technology may be impressive, but as we've seen, it's definitely not infallible. And the Relical has got Hindenburg written all over it. It's sophisticated but not without its vulnerabilities. Even Trevor acknowledges this ill-conceived dirigible presents a catastrophic civilization-ending liability for Bregna. The cloning is all we have. It's not enough. If you do this, we end. I'm struggling to understand how intelligent scientists could really think this was a good idea. Orin and I built the relical to store the DNA and conceal the cloning process. But since they've already went with this insanely stupid way to store and redistribute their genetic code, naturally they must have some solid security to at least protect this thing. The Relical is armoured, but that's precisely where the security measures end. With convenient tendrils acting as a ladder, the thing doesn't even have a door. There are no guards, seemingly no surveillance, and no security response whatsoever to Eon's presence. The authorities don't even seem to know that an infiltration has occurred. Trevor only finds out by going there himself and talking to a human foreskin, or knobhead as I like to call him. So with nothing beyond armor protecting the relical, Eon is left to infiltrate it a second time, easily blowing it out of the sky, which considering what we've learned of this city could be viewed as an act of mercy. Though that probably does signify the end of Bregna as we know it. Luckily due to the blossoming fertility situation, humanity should endure. But keep in mind, if this thing had crashed at any time during the last 400 hundred years, that would have been the end of them. And as it turns out, the Relical is not only the delivery vehicle for a genetic library, but a bit of wacky symbolism too. Part seed, part sperm, it breaches the wall of the egg-shaped city. But since it's busting out, not in, I guess that means humanity is going to resume screwing the world? Thanks for watching. Subscribe for a faithful adaptation of Eon's wardrobe, and don't forget to like Sathandra's hand feet.